Joo, anna poi reivi. Voi reivi pohkeille. Mulla on näissä kuvilla olemaa Aslah Nidja Saslah ja Jovna Shaila Nidja Saslah. Poivan nyrkkänis teenulieis ja, ja purus pohtiin tän, tän kuulahtallan tjohkimiin. So, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Aslak Holmberg. I am uh, the president of the Sami Council and I'm also the uh, uh, vice uh, member or alternate member uh, to the uh, facilitative working group of the local communities and indigenous peoples platform. And uh, I am alternate member to Gunbrit Retter, who is uh, the main representative from the Arctic. Um, so welcome to this uh, informal youth uh, um, consultation, uh, which is organized by the Facilitative Working Group for the Local Communities and Indigenous Peoples Platform of the uh, United Nations Framework Convention of the, on, on Climate Change. So first, uh, a few housekeeping notes. Um, um, first thing, there is interpretation available. So um, you'll find the, the globe button in the in the Zoom. At least on my version, it's uh, it, uh, uh, in the lower part of the of the screen. There is the globe button with the word interpretation. So in this session, we have uh, uh, interpretation for Russian. Uh, as well as uh, for Spanish, uh, sorry, for French. So thank you very much for, for the interpreters for making yourselves available for this uh, meeting. Uh, that being said, we got the, the confirmation of the interpretation uh, on a um, very late, uh, late moment. So uh, I think it's uh, good to ask our participants if there is uh, uh, someone who who requires uh, French interpretation. So, could uh, could you please indicate if uh, if there is somebody who who requires uh, or who would prefer to uh, use the French interpretation? Because we we want to make sure that uh, that uh, the interpreters are not uh, interpreting to to nobody. So we would ask. Uh, you to please uh, uh, inform us if there is a need for for French interpretation. Uh, you can either write in the chat or or just uh, open your microphone and tell us if you prefer to use French. No. Okay. Well, it it could be that because uh, we were not able to inform participants while while you were registering that uh, we have this opportunity for for French interpretation that uh, that that's why there are no no participants who who prefer to use French. So I guess. Uh, that being the case, uh, uh, I would thank very much for our, our French interpreters, uh, Marie, Paul and Veronica, for making yourselves uh, available. But uh, unfortunately, on this short notice, there were no participants who, uh, who prefer to use French. So I, I guess there is uh, then uh, no need for you to stay around. But again, thanks, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us and making yourselves available. Okay, uh, I was given 10 minutes for the introductions. I see we're over already 10, uh, seven minutes past, so we, I will try to move on. Uh, one, one information item is that um, uh, this session will be recorded and, and published in the, uh, in the LCIPP web portal, so that is for your information. And uh, if you want to make a comment or, or ask a question, then please use the raise hand function, which is uh, in the uh, lower parts of the Zoom screen. And we will then uh, moderate the, the discussion. And um, it would be good if, uh, if you can open your camera if you wish to speak. 
but otherwise if you're not speaking then please uh, mute yourself okay i guess we can go to the next slide so the aim of uh, this um, informal virtual uh, youth consultation is to to gather inputs from uh, um, youth uh, indigenous youth and youth from local communities on uh, on how could we strengthen the engagement of uh, of uh, indigenous youth and uh, youth from local communities in climate action and uh, in the UNFCCC the climate change convention process and in this case we have uh, especially in mind the upcoming cop in Egypt in November and the cop 27 and uh, a youth roundtable that is planned to to take place there. So, uh, one of the aims is to gather inputs on on how could we um, effectively design this um, youth roundtable, and uh, as well as the um, subsequent uh, um, youth sessions. So, I guess we can go to the next. Yes, thank you. So, this is our agenda for today. We'll have a quick overview of the local communities and indigenous peoples platform and then take a look at the, the second uh, three-year work plan of uh, of the um, uh, activity um, or yes the overall work plan and especially the activity eight which is the youth engagement um, then we'll open up for discussion and then have a few words uh, on on next uh, steps as well as uh, closing of the uh, meeting so next slide please so uh, lcipp or local communities and indigenous peoples platform uh, facilitates the uh, exchange of experiences and good practices uh, which uh, which en enable us to build a more climate resilient world world for all uh, next slide please Yes, so briefly the process uh, about this uh, platform, it was decided to be established in, uh, in COP21 and um, then uh, the facilitative working group uh, was uh, uh, established at, uh, at COP24, which uh, aims to operationalize the, the platform. And um, then uh, fast forward to COP26, um, they adopted the, the second uh, three-year work plan for the uh, platform. Um, yes, and then in COP27, we'll be convening a, a series of uh, mandated events uh, through this uh, platform. Uh, next, please. Also, please follow the chat. There will be some relevant links uh, related to what I'm speaking, if you wish to have more information. Um, so the platform has uh, three overall functions, uh, which are knowledge, capacity for engagement, uh, and uh, climate change policies and actions. So on the knowledge front, uh, the aim is to promote exchange of experiences and, and best practices with the aim of uh, strengthening um, traditional knowledge and, and, uh, and knowledge uh, systems um, and uh, that uh, could contribute to um, addressing climate change um, and, and responding to that. Uh, the capacity for engagement aims to uh, build more capacity in indigenous peoples and local communities both to um, more effectively participate in the uh, climate change convention process, um, but also to uh, the aim is to build the capacity of, of parties and other stakeholders on, um, on indigenous peoples and local communities uh, matters. Um, and then on the policies, um, the aim is to strengthen uh, the role of uh, diverse knowledge systems and, and practices in uh, designing uh, policies uh, both internationally and, and uh, actions on the national level as well yes i think we can go to the next so briefly on the on the second uh, three-year work plan of the platform which we are now in the process of uh, of uh, enacting next please 
So here you can see all the different activities. Um, we'll be focusing here on uh, activity eight, which is the annual youth roundtable, which is again taking place uh, uh, during the COP session in, in November in, in Egypt. Uh, yes, next please. So activity eight um, is um, is the annual youth roundtable, and um, it is to be um, designed uh, um, in collaboration with the indigenous uh, youth and youth from local communities. And uh, um, the aim is to uh, enable a stronger youth uh, participation in the uh, United uh, Nations. Um, um, the climate uh, convention process and, uh, and we aim to have participation from uh, each of the uh, different uh, social cultural regions and uh, the aim is to explore gender responsive ways to strengthen the engagement of uh, of youth and participation in uh, intergenerational knowledge uh, sharing uh, which would then contribute to to practices on the on the ground um yes we can go to the next please so the objectives of this uh, round table uh, are enhancing the understanding uh, of the um, climate change convention um, um, procedures both within the convention but also uh, um, how it impacts uh, or what other processes are, are related to that and um, and to also enhance the understanding of uh, of the international human rights uh, standards of uh, of indigenous people's rights and how they link to the uh, work of the climate change convention as well as other other climate related um, um, initiatives such as the governmental platform on climate change which is the science body uh, of the climate change convention uh, the second aim of the roundtable is the enhancing uh, engagement of uh, indigenous youth and youth from local communities in, in climate uh, policy development and implementation uh, at all levels. And uh, the third uh, objective is uh, facilitating the participation uh, of uh, of uh, indigenous uh, youth uh, in um, uh, intergovernmental uh, sorry intergenerational knowledge sharing, uh, which would then strengthen the, the practices on the on the ground and, and promote intergenerational equity. Yes, next please. So yes, I believe this is uh, at least one of the last slides that I, I have in this introduction. So just uh, on the uh, deliverables of this uh, roundtable. So we aim to organize this uh, uh, knowledge uh, gathering, which would be devoted to intergenerational knowledge uh, sharing, uh, which would then again enhance the youth engagement in climate uh, policy development and implementation. And uh, there is an aim of developing uh, recommendations on how can we enhance the uh, leadership of uh, indigenous youth and youth from local communities. Um, so one of the deliverables is um, uh, forming recommendations from these youth participants uh, um, on, on this uh, um, matters that will be will be discussed in the roundtable, which would then help to promote uh, their participation also in the work of the uh, facilitative uh, in the activities led by the facilitative working group, um, but also in in a wider um, sense enhance the knowledge uh, sharing and capacity building related to to the climate convention process. Uh, next, please. Yes, so that was um, the the introductions part. Um, um, so thank you for paying attention. I see there are still people joining in. So well, sorry, welcome everybody. 
So that concludes our introduction. So now um, the secretariat will post uh, a link to the to the chat, which is um, a menti poll, a mentimeter poll. So I would ask participants to to please uh, click on the link. I see it's not in the chat yet. Um, but um, we would want to, uh, before we start the discussion, uh, we would like to get um, get some uh, idea of uh, uh, what kind of participation we have. So there is a question on, on uh, what region you come from, as well as there is a possibility of, uh, of um, highlighting some issues that you think would be important to, to discuss in the youth roundtable. And then there is a possibility to, uh, to further elaborate your, your comments. Um, yes, now you can find the Menti, uh, Menti link in the chat, as well as you need to enter the code that is both in the chat and you can see it on the screen. So please uh, go ahead and, and open the Mentimeter website and uh, enter this uh, code and and you can get uh, uh, get to answer the the couple questions that we want to have before we uh, open up for discussion so yeah i just give it a a minute so you can you can find the link and enter the code Okay, so I see there are seven, eight participants now who have um, uh, found their way to the Menti. So please, anybody who is not there yet, uh, you could uh, uh, follow the link and enter the code. So I see we have uh, altogether 20. 27 participants of course there is a number of secretariat people as well but it should be more than nine so please please go ahead and follow the link and and enter the uh, uh, code to mentimeter or you can also scan this qr code with your uh, mobile device if you prefer okay well uh, Yes, I guess we have given it some time now, so uh, we should uh, move move on to to the first uh, question. Um, yes, here you can see it. I hope you have uh, found your way to this uh, uh, Menti poll. So the first. Uh, uh, question is uh, which uh, social cultural region do you associate with so there are the uh, seven uh, seven social cultural regions as well as option of others but um, yes so this is uh, to get uh, get a sense of what kind of participation we have looks like we have a quite a global uh, uh, audience which is uh, great um yes okay some answers still coming in i think that was most of those who have found their way to mentimeter okay we have quite a diverse uh, uh, participation um we can go to the next uh, question please so on this part we we would ask you to um 
consider and, and let us know if uh, you have some topics in mind or themes or, or areas that uh, could be discussed at this uh, annual youth roundtable at COP. Like what in your perspective would be um, beneficial um, as a topic or a theme to be discussed in the youth uh, roundtable, which would uh, contribute um, towards the, um, the, the objectives of, of this activity, such as the intergenerational um, knowledge uh, sharing or, or building capacity on, on the process of the uh, UNF triple C. So yes, I see some answers are coming up. Good. I'll give it um, a minute or so. Okay, that's good. Climate smart uh, options, intergenerational dialogue, climate justice. I'm struggling to see all the different colors. So I can barely the participation of indigenous people's youth. Uh, progress, yes, good. Nature-based solutions, NBS. Impacts of climate change on youth, yes, thank you. Very good uh, suggestions coming up. We'll be sure to make make notes, take note of this um, for for further consideration when designing the uh, annual youth roundtable. Yes. What did I miss? Oil use. Yeah, the text is getting smaller and smaller, but it's good that there are more, more uh, uh, suggestions coming up. So I guess, um, um, yes, maybe I'll give it just uh, uh, 15 more seconds. Oh, yes. and. Um, as uh, Supriya kindly posted on the chat, uh, if you were not able to uh, access the menti, then feel free to write your uh, proposals in the chat of the Zoom as well. And um, um, I see we are, I guess, more or less in time, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, but um, perhaps um, um, we will start moving towards the uh, open discussion. Yes, and, and uh, if you wish, you can also during this open discussion um, uh, elaborate on, on what you proposed uh, uh, to have as a, as a topic. Um, so we would encourage um, because this has been so far only myself speaking, so perhaps to have a bit more uh, connecting with, with each other, then um, uh, I would encourage you to uh, introduce yourself in the chat. So if you could please uh, write your name, um, where you come from, and um, if you wish the, the people or community that you belong to, uh, as well as if you want to share your um, email contact information. And also you can write uh, um, if you have a special interest in some thematic uh, area. So again, I'll give it um, a couple of minutes so you can write your uh, brief uh, introduction as, uh, as you see fitting and, and you can see in the um, uh, in the current slide uh, as well, what, what you can share if you so wish. So I'll give it uh, a minute or so that you can introduce yourself.
Yes, don't be shy. Just um, go ahead and write. Yeah, I see some uh, introductions coming up. Good to see some some familiar names. Hello, Anthony and Adil Barra. Good to, good to have you with us. Um, perhaps the Secretariat can uh, assist us with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the the introductions in different languages. So if you could. Uh, um, with the help of Google Translate, then um, help us to to understand uh, each other's introductions. I see there is some some in Russian. Hi, Susanna, Barivit. So yeah, I'll just give it a minute. Yes, good. There are some introductions coming up. Please follow the chat. So we have uh, we have participants from, as you saw, from many different regions, uh, from uh, Kenya, Siberia, Bangladesh, Sapmi, uh, Russian Far East. Uh, um, and yes. Okay, good to have also some themes proposed here. Okay, participation also from Aotearoa, Kiora, Tiana. Good to have you with us. Yes, good participation from Bangladesh as well. That's good. Yes, we'll be sure to make uh, notes out of your, your comments in the chat. Okay, so now it's time for us to open for discussion. So we have some uh, guiding questions. Uh, perhaps we can put the first uh, question on screen, uh, at least briefly, I can go through this. Uh, so we would ask your input on or, or comments on what do you think, how, how can the annual youth roundtable at COP27 in, uh, in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt uh, be designed to achieve the the uh, the objectives of this activity and you can see the different um, objectives also on the screen and perhaps they can also be posted on the chat so these objectives are again enhancing the understanding on the unfccc uh, process and, and substance as well as uh, processes uh, linked to climate change, which are outside the convention. Um, also, objective is to, to enhance uh, engagement of uh, indigenous uh, and local community youth in um, development of climate uh, policy and implementing that, as well as um, facilitating the participation of uh, of indigenous uh, youth and youth from local communities in uh, intergenerational knowledge sharing. So 
yes if we can also post the objectives to the chat then i would propose that um, we stop sharing the screen and uh, to enable a more uh, more uh, open discussion and the feeling that we are uh, talking with one another as a group i would propose that um, if you wish so you could uh, open open your camera so we can see uh, the different uh, participants who are here and um, yes then um, yes the floor is open for any any comments you you wish to make and again please uh, please uh, have the chat open to to see the first uh, question so how can the annual youth roundtable uh, be designed to achieve the objectives of, of this activity. Okay, I see the first uh, question over there and also I encourage others to think questions and, and if you wish so open your camera so we can see whom are we talking with. So please, Anthony, go ahead. Thank you, Aslak, and uh, I'm happy to report that uh, uh, we we have been engaging with you as like uh, for the last yeah, yeah. so the whole of last year and yes uh, what to do with the UNF UNF triple C I remember uh, oh, uh, during the the vigorous lesson regarding the climate change. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. My concern is that uh, last time we we had the same 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 uh, the topic that we have discussed. Is, uh, but I'm, I'm I stand to be corrected because these are the points that we have discussed last. I don't know if it was on last Tuesday, but I'm happy uh, for this discussion uh, because. Hope, most of the hope uh, that has uh, that has been held, uh, there was no such pre cop preparation as far as uh, the youth uh, is concerned. But I'm happy to see that um, these are the preparation for the roundtable discussion in the COP uh, at, at, at around November. Uh, that uh, I said last time that uh, you have been left out. Uh, because uh, during uh, the past COP, um, not all youth, uh, maybe uh, organizations that are credited for maybe for the appointment to climate change and the climate crisis concern. Uh, also the involvement of uh, local uh, local uh, communities as a way of uh, knowledge transfer because indigenous uh, knowledge is key for people now to, uh, to use in the COP uh, uh, as a knowledge transfer because uh, you might find uh, people who are not learning in a given society. But if we, we borrow the if we borrow uh, the uh, knowledge and then we, we convert it now to be maybe in a scientific way, it will help us to uh, to develop uh, uh, climate change impact because it's these are the global issue that we are addressed urgently. So that's the thing I have for now. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Anthony, for that. Uh, the connection was breaking up a little bit, but I think uh, we captured uh, most of what you said. And, and um, yes, this is part of this uh, uh, pre-COP uh, preparations um, um, regarding youth youth participation. So thank you again for joining. This is an um, opportunity to contribute uh, into the, the planning uh, of uh, of the mandated activity that is taking place in the COP. So, okay, I see a couple more hands. 
Um, I'm not sure who was the first, and sorry for any mispronunciation, but uh, Rinal, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Aslak. Uh, I'm Rinal, I'm from Bangladesh, and I'm one of the alternate member of FWG of the uh, current tenure. And <clears throat> What I would like to uh, raise to achieve the objectives under activity eight, like we can see three objectives, uh, enhancing the understanding of the substance procedure inside and outside the convention. I think as we know, not all the youths are able to participate in the COP. So, I think we need to uh, think of how we can involve them, the youths, uh, even if they are not uh, able to physically participate in the <clears throat> COP. In the COP, that is one thing. And under for under the objective two, we can see enhancing the engagement of indigenous youths. Uh, in climate policy development and implementation at all levels. Same same way, I think, you know, those who will be in, involved at the COP level, that is okay. And, if, and, and, and finally, the important thing is how we can influence the, the national and local policies, because these, these policies are the ones which uh, is um, um, to be implemented on the ground. And that is how the indigenous youth or indigenous people will benefit from the decision. So, uh, so I think uh, engagement or there should be a mechanism uh, how the indigenous youth can uh, get involved and influence the national and local policies. And for the third objective, facilitate the participation of indigenous youths, um, knowledge sharing, anyway, same way. But here, another question is uh, like, because of the funding constraints or, um, I don't know, the, the, um, the limitations of uh, seats or accommodations in the, in the COP, uh, one thing is, is it possible for some youths who are self-funded but want to attend the COP in person? Is there any way? And how um, the secretariat can facilitate them getting visa, getting um, uh, accommodation, etc. But they would be self-funded. And another, uh, second thing is whether it is possible you know, during the COP when this youth convent, uh, conference will take place, um, can there be any um, possibility to attend virtually with them or, and also whether there could be any parallel events at national level, for example, for those who are not able to physically go to COP but they may organize some things at national level. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Renal, for those questions. Good, good points. Um, um, perhaps the secretariat uh, would uh, uh, like to take the floor to respond to the specific questions. Uh, Priya or anyone? Uh, yes, Aslak. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Renat, for those points. Um, we'll definitely get back to you on some of the specific items and we'll, um, we'll incorporate that in the report as well. Uh, but we're trying to get the virtual participation enabled um, and so on. We've made requests, but of course, we are working through logistics um, to figure out the details on the same. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thanks, uh, Supriya. Um, and um, yes, I also encourage uh, if any of our uh, participants uh, who speak uh, Russian want to take the floor, you also have the opportunity and we have the interpretation. And, and for that, I remind uh, those who don't speak Russian, you can go ahead and choose English from the interpretation menu. Uh, but uh, then I see Mitun. 
please take the floor. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, already uh, Mr. Minal raised uh, already my point, but uh, I want to add with Mr. Minal. Um, I don't know that uh, how much youth will get the opportunity to participate uh, in the uh, even at people see convention in uh, in the upcoming I mean COP27. But uh, before the COP27, I would like to propose that. Uh, if uh, even a triple C secretariat uh, will uh, organize and one, I mean one kind of uh, pre-COP uh, youth gathering and uh, uh, and then youth can prioritize their uh, local issue and they can make a thematic report or paper and and those youth uh, get the opportunity to participate in the COP then they will present that report in the COP. I think uh, that will be one OA. And another one is the uh, youth engagement in local communities. And I want to mention that already youth uh, working with the communities. So I think they have uh, some opportunity uh, to raise their uh, local issues in the policy level, I mean the national level. So, uh, so overall, I think uh, we can uh, arrange uh, a pre of youth gathering and then we can make a uh, report. Then that can be effective way, I think. Yeah, thank you so much. Any quick uh, response to that from the Secretariat? No, again, as like I have these points noted out and then we'll discuss and get back to you soon. Yes, good, thanks. Okay, then I see Olga, please go ahead. Hello to everyone. My name is Olga Kostrova. Thank you very much for your information. Thank you to organizers for this possibility to take part in this session. I want to share some information about our regional happenings and to put some proposals, what we can discuss uh, during activity eight. We had uh, a regional youth forum from different uh, districts and communities. They gathered together about uh, 80 people, uh, the most talented uh, youth For me, it was uh, surprising that uh, no one raised the question of climate change. And when I was uh, introduced to those people and uh, I raised this question of climate change, I was uh, seeing surprised uh, eyes of my interlocutors. So I was uh, trying to attract their attention to this topic, which is very important for the youth. But uh, again, I saw lack of understanding. So I want to put my proposal to activity eight during your session to prepare to discuss uh, a plan how to what activity should be done at uh, regional level, how to share information, how to interact uh, properly with the youth in order not to see the lack of understanding, how to organize uh, this procedure and how to engage uh, any youth, uh, especially uh, indigenous people, people's youth. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Olaka and Privet. Um, yes, we'll be sure to take note note of that. Um, there are no more hands up, but uh, please go ahead. Yes, I see there is one hand coming up, and also 
uh, related to this uh, question that is in the chat, um, you can also feel free to elaborate on any points that you, you noted on the Mentimeter as, uh, as topics that you would wish to uh, discuss in this uh, round table. So, yes, and then go ahead, uh, Susanna. Hey, good evening. I hope you all can hear me. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Susanna, and I am um, working for the Sami Council together with Atta and Gundi. Um, so Sami Council, uh, we have had um, meetings with, with Sami youth representatives um, to discuss um, the preparations for, for um, the youth round table and, and what they would like to see. Um, so I would like to give the floor actually to Ella Rao now, who is here with us today, um, to, to present what, what their thoughts were. So I give the floor to you, Ella Rao now. Yes, a brilliant way of uh, distributing tasks. Hey, Alati and Boris, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Ella Rao and I'm um, from the Norwegian Sami Association's Youth um, Council. Um, and like Susanna said, we did have a meeting um, in the start of the summer where we where we talked about this round table and um, we talked about uh, like two different meetings that we would want to have as youth. So the first would be like this informal gathering for youth only uh, with door closed to like the public where we would create this safe space so that we could um, talk about the, the issues with climate change and, and highlight how, it's, uh, how the climate change in, impacts us as youth and our lives. And then uh, of course, first and foremost, the impacts on culture, but then also um, health-wise um, with, you know, climate anxiety, uh, stress and, and the risk of uh, mental health il uh, illness since, you know, our, it's our lives and it's our like livelihoods and cultures and languages that are at risk because uh, of the climate uh, change. Um, so, yeah. That, that would be uh, what we would want uh, before this round table. But then the official kind of youth gathering uh, would be this, um, uh, this round table. And then that would be a place where we could kind of present what we have been talking about together. Um, and then maybe, you know, to make this round table talk feel kind of more important and that we actually do have a say, it would be nice to have some, some maybe higher um, you know, level people there to, to, um, to listen and, and to kind of have a conversation uh, with and discuss and, uh, and all of that. So um, yeah, I think I, I mentioned basically what we, what we were talking about. Uh, but yeah, to to just um, also say again that the, I think that the uh, conversation before the safe space will be very important for us uh, to get to know each other and and the the challenges that we all have and the common and the different challenges that we that we have as indigenous youth. And um, so yes, uh, Susanna, feel free to add something if I forgot. But uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, these were good, good points and of course um, many of the topics uh, related to climate change are, are very difficult to discuss so it's, um, it's understandable this proposal to have a um, close discussion also that um, not all discussions are meant to be public and also it would be a preparation for the actual round table which would be in the public part so yeah that's a good Good suggestion. We'll be sure to take note of that. Okay. Um, any <clears throat> any other points on this 
what would you wish to see in the in the youth roundtable? Any any thoughts on on the content or the 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 process? How would we actually uh, make that happen? So now is now is the time to give us any input you might have on how could we effectively um, facilitate the the participation of of youth and what what do you want to see in this kind of round table um, also there were some questions posed on the chat i am struggling to follow all of that but if anybody wants to um also explain any any uh, topics or or thoughts you had that um, that you have posted either in the chat or in the mentimeter then please go ahead and and uh, feel free to take the floor and, and further uh, elaborate or, or highlight your, your points. Okay. Yes, I see Susanna's hand up again. Go ahead. Ito, thank you, Asta. Um, I'm thinking um, related to the first objective, enhancing the understanding of, of the substance and procedures of so UNFCCC, um, when listening to, to Sami youth and, and their um, request to, to have a, a, a preparatory meeting or gathering, um, if that could be arranged. Um, and I've heard also the, the thoughts from, from other participants on the importance of, of preparatory meetings. And could that be um, uh, the object, first objective, enhancing the understanding of, of the UNFCCC procedures, could that be something that could be done in such uh, a meeting? Um, the closed, if, if that uh, could be arranged, the closed meeting for, for the youth participants that are coming to the youth roundtable um, for this to, a uh, closed meeting to take place at the COP. Um, with preparatory uh, information and a crash course on the UNFCCC, the, the LSIC uh, and such things, because I think those things are super important. Um, so that's a suggestion if, um, yeah, that I, I think would be great. I will stop there, I think, <laughs> and think a little more. Thank you so much, Susanna. I think, Aslak, your screen is frozen. Uh, can you still hear us? Looks like Aslak is having some technical issues um, and hopefully he'll be able to join us soon. Um, but meanwhile, thank you, Susanna, for those concrete um, suggestions and uh, your colleague also from SAMI Council, we've made a note of it and we'll uh, check in as to what is possible and what is not in terms of logistics and um, other, other matters. Um, perhaps as given the time, we are almost approaching the hour um, and we'll wait, of course, for us luck to join in and I'll hand it over to him after that. But I'll request my colleague, Hesu, um, to share her screen and perhaps we can put in the second question, the second framing question that we have for today. I will also put, put this in the chat. So the second question um, we would like to get your inputs on are what specific actions could help indigenous youth and youth from local communities participate fully and effectively uh, in the annual youth roundtable at COP27. Um, of course, we have the objectives that we had discussed earlier, um, but we would really like to get your inputs on the second question as well. Um, let me see if there are any hands raised over here. I don't see any hands being raised so far. Do 
please uh, feel free to comment in the chat on the specific actions. Um, I think many of you already mentioned um, in the question one as well on some of the specific actions in terms of um, in terms of facilitating your participation on the format of uh, the event that you would like to see, uh, but any other inputs on how you would, um, how we could facilitate your participation further, um, that, would, that would really help us uh, put in, in efforts in the concept note that we'll be creating for the annual youth roundtable at COP27 as well. I do see Anthony, your hand is raised, so over to you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, in, in, in regards to the question, which is uh, uh, asking about the specific action that uh, uh, is that uh, uh, youth need uh, to be uh, fully represented. I think that's the, the, the actions which need urgent attention, fully represented in the COP. Through that, uh, you know, exposure is very, very important because once they, they, uh, when they join the round table, they will be able to develop confidence uh, to air their, uh, their challenges as far as uh, youth and climate uh, uh, crisis and climate change are concerned. We will now to air out what uh, what really are affecting them from the country, maybe the national level, the regional level, and the local level. So, uh, my main concern is full representation. And uh, as I said earlier, the very very big challenge is that uh, youth uh, organizations they are not accredited. And if they are accredited, they are not uh, uh, appointed, maybe uh, they are not given an opportunity to attend such, uh, such event. And as we, as we know, the youth are the people of tomorrow. So if they fail now to attend the meeting, uh, more so physically, they will be able now to, uh, they will be able now to, uh, to develop confidence and do that, uh, they know, they know, uh, after attending the meeting, they'll be able now to, to develop a confidence and have that courage and have that confidence to, to continue advocating uh, what is pertaining to the youth uh, in their, their place of uh, maybe of origins and uh, uh, also in the, local, in the local level. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Over to you, Aslak, uh, since you're back now. But I uh, just wanted to say, Anthony, thank you so much for raising that again. These were some of the things that were discussed in session one as well. So we are collecting all of this input and we'll put it in the um, report and then the design of the session. Over to you, Aslak. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Supri, and thanks, Anthony, for, for your point um yeah sorry about that i i dropped out i'm not sure what happened my connection was briefly lost but i'm i'm back now yes so as you can see we did already touch up on on some of these um, um, aspects of the second question uh, during our our previous uh, discussions but uh, um if there is any um anything you might want to add regarding the specific actions that uh, could uh, um, help to uh, help youth to effectively participate in the in this youth uh, table at cop then then please uh, please feel free to take the floor so any any more comments or or thoughts about uh, how can we uh, effectively help help um, uh, youth to participate in this roundtable? So we have heard the um, proposal of a preparatory meeting as well as um, uh, sharing information about uh, 
um, about the, the UNFCCC, the, the LCIPP, and the FWG, a lot of acronyms, sorry about that, but uh, yes, that it would be beneficial to share some information to participants uh, in advance to, to coming to, to the venue, as well as regarding facilitating the virtual participation. Okay. I don't see any more hands up now. Yeah, perhaps we can um, yeah, is there anything uh, anybody would want to um, highlight regarding um, the specific topics for discussion? There was quite a number of uh, of points raised um, um, both in the chat and in the in the mentimeter so of course we'll we'll take note of that but if there is anything um, you might want to further uh, elaborate why do you think a specific topic would be important for youth to discuss uh, there uh, at the cop then uh, you can also uh, elaborate on your on your points. Um, I see Dilbara posted something on the chat, so perhaps the Secretariat can facilitate the translation. Okay, thanks. Here it is. Yes, yes, uh, translation. That is uh, indeed one one point that we we need to consider um, regarding this uh, roundtable and. I do believe in the mandated events, there is uh, translation. Am I correct, uh, Supreme? Um, yeah, I mean, we, will, we have requested for translation, but of course it depends on uh, the logistics and the availability and so on. So we are confirming this, but um, rest assured that we are, um, doing everything in our capacity to make sure that there would be interpretation available. However, we are what we are waiting for confirmation uh, on this as well. But just wanted to say as luck that this is something that was um, that was brought up in session one as well. So we do see a common theme there uh, on several of these issues that were brought up and we will be putting it all together. Back to you, Aslak. All right, thanks. Thanks for that uh, clarification. Um, okay, yes, feel free to also uh, write in the chat if you wish. I see there is one, one comment. Mm. Um, Yes, uh, regarding uh, problems faced at the, at the local level and, and expressing concerns, of course, I think that is one one aim for for this roundtable is to to share concerns that um, that um, youth has from different uh, regions. Um, I see Susanna asking for the floor. So thank you. I uh, I just want to add that I think that um, it's so important for the youth to own the process and the the content. Um, and I I think that it would be, if possible, it would be so great to gather the youth participating at the roundtable um, to before the actual round table um, for them to decide on, on the topics and, and for them to owning the process. And I, I think also it's uh, really important that uh, as a few participants highlighted that it actually is an event that is heard. So it's not just any other event at COP, because COP is a really big venue and it's really a lot of things happening. So um, 
for it to be an event that is heard, that the youth feel that they are, youth are necessary in, in, in our societies. Youth are leaders. And that should be really highlighted. And, and yeah, that's what I really dream for this event. That, um, yeah, I don't know how to, to arrange for that, but um, yeah, I guess you, you understand my, my thoughts. Uh, yes, Kito, Kito, Susanna. Uh, duly noted. Um, yes, and I see some people are still uh, joining us. Um, so just to um, uh, repeat, we're we're discussing any um, thoughts and ideas you have uh, regarding the the youth roundtable that is to be ta taking place in in the COP in Egypt, and if you have any any views on. Uh, on how to prepare for that, how do you think uh, we can best uh, facilitate that uh, discussion so that it would uh, um, would be useful to to youth and also uh, how we could uh, achieve the objectives of this activity, as uh, you can see the the different objectives in uh, on the screen here. Yes. Um, and um, I'm not sure if we had a third question in this um, these slides, but we have already been covering that um, um, regarding any um, specific topics you might have um, regarding um, what do you think would be important to to discuss at this uh, roundtable. So. If there are any more comments on that, then I'll, I'll just wait a few more seconds for anybody who might wish to take the floor. Yes. I see Damayanti, please go ahead. Thank you, Asla, and thank you the organizing uh, team for conducting this youth consultation. My name is Damayanti, and I'm the Yongo Indigenous Solidarity Working Group's contact point. Uh, I am humbly honored to share uh, my knowledge about um, the indigenous, um, especially in the area of the enhancing the engagement of indigenous youth and youth from local communities in climate policies development and implementations at all levels um all right um for hands um as the indigenous uh, youth coming from local communities uh, i mean indigenous youth coming uh, living in the local communities currently uh, i feel that this is important for um, all the parties to engage, I mean, not only in the indigenous youth itself, but also about the indigenous communities um, to, to be able to uh, collaborate or to elaborate their uh, perspective on how the policies should be shaped. Um, this, is, this is not limited uh, to the local or the traditional knowledge that should be um, compiled in in all um, all perspective uh, or in tackling the climate um, change um, and also um, from my perspective that um, indigenous traditional knowledge uh, is unique to every indigenous communities and different and this is important for uh, us to learn I mean like uh, capturing good practice for from all the regions and then probably create a policy books or uh, about uh, or creating a books that compile these good practices and then we could distribute it for for us this is also important um, to to be able not only about to distribute this policy but how we could disseminate the policy itself um, the last uh, the last the first I mean the first days of the engage uh, of these consultations I also highlight about the importance on how the policies should be 
uh, form based on the um, knowledge of the indigenous and how um, that indigenous youth could be engaged in the policy uh, making in all levels. But this is more on um, the assessment and the evaluations while it is coming for the implementation. And also in the disseminations process, we need um, strategy um, which uh, in which the strategy is supposed to um, include um, the, the indigenous um, perspective itself and how indigenous from different community could engage in the uh, policy shape uh, or in the policy making in national levels. Um, this is just my suggestions. I hope that there will be like national focal points specific for indigenous youth in every member state. Um, why this is important because I feel that indigenous youth should be given a specific space for um, for them to voice out uh, about the perspective about um, how we could um, build uh, or do the action or uh, climate um, to do the conservation, for example, and then um, for the agricultures and many other things. So my point is about uh, how we uh, how we could give the space specific space for the indigenous youth uh, for example uh, give them positions in the national level as the national uh, focal points in every member states and or give them a the specific advisory board for um, the unfccc um, or at the lcip itself probably but yeah this is just my suggestion thank you yeah thanks a lot uh, damayanti for for your uh, um, ideas we'll surely take note of that um yeah i see some people still joining in perhaps some um time zone confusion but uh, i see Vyacheslav also joining hello i'm glad you're here hope you're well so we are actually just um, closing towards the end of this um, session so I'm just asking if there are any any final remarks. Okay, I see Catherine. Please go ahead. Yeah, I will not on the video. I just have some thoughts uh, regarding uh, the youth, uh, indigenous youth. Uh, in in our place, I am from uh, Manipur, Northeast India from a very small village, I would say. Um, uh, and uh, is, is, can, is I'm audible or hello? Uh, yes, Catherine, we can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, based on my knowledge and experiences, uh, I just would like to say, like, if uh, if uh, this uh, platform could uh, enlarge uh, the hands to unreach, uh, to reach to the unreached, because uh, many people uh, from small, small villages and small, small places where uh, where uh, most of the youth, not only the youth, I would say, uh, the children, the women are facing problems like, um, uh, if, for example, by carrying like water for long distances, which uh, they face different kind of uh, violences and at the same time health problems and also due to all this climate change. So why not we, we put this platform to make it in a larger platform so that even the unreached people can reach and you know be, feel more privileged um i would say because of this platform and engage more uh youth so that uh the youth can pass on uh the i would say the the privileges or the development uh sectors or in any sectors which development are needed so um 
we can put more platform by using different kinds of tools and techniques and mechanisms so that youth can be engaged in more uh, in this platform and then so that the unprivileged people can be more privileged. Uh, and that is one point from my side. And another point is that uh, in making the policies, uh, I would like uh, to um, uh, uh, make a uh, make uh, or uh, request uh, that uh, the secretary that in making the policies uh, um, we need to uh, be very specific so that we touch all the areas of indigenous life, the culture, the religion. Um, uh, yeah, I would say every like the traditional medicine. All these areas should be touched like specifically so that we can uh, we can enjoy it. Uh, our indigenous life uh, without any kind of constraint we, so that we can live in freedom and protect our land freedom uh, like uh, like a free bat I would say yeah uh, yeah there's more to share but uh, like because of time constraint uh, yeah that's all thank you thank you so much Catherine and thank you for highlighting um, the the need to do more outreach and reach out to um, reach out to representatives from these indigenous communities that you mentioned as well. Um, we've made a note on that and also uh, on the ELSIP in general, one of the uh, main functions of ELSIP is to facilitate the integration of uh, uh, diverse knowledge systems and practices um, and policies in a manner that respects and promotes rights and interests of local communities and um, indigenous people. So that speaks to your second point as well. Um, so we'll see how this is integrated and tied through the work plan and the different activities, including the activity eight on annual youth roundtable. Um, so thank you for your inputs, Catherine. And uh, we will be sharing a Google form, for instance, if you want to provide some more inputs and written inputs, we'd also appreciate that. But I see Aslak is back, so I will hand it back to Aslak. Yeah, thanks a lot, Supriya, for covering on me. I'm not sure what's going on with my connection. And uh, I also see there were good, good points uh, um that were uh, raised by Catherine so I'm sure I'll see the notes from that okay but yeah I guess I was just um about to say that we're coming close to the uh, closing of the session so I can just ask if there are any more final comments anybody wants to make before I go into the next steps and, and closing of this uh, session so any more uh brief remarks anybody wants to make okay i see dilbara and um, go ahead привет здравствуйте всем меня зовут дилбара hello everyone my name is dilbara i am from far east of uh, russia um i represent udge people I think we must um, plan beforehand our agenda so that everybody knows uh, what everyone wants to present. And I want every region to present uh, its specific problems and uh, possible solutions. And if he has no solutions, so together we can think about possible outcomes and also we must uh, address uh, our work regarding climate change and i want to suggest that uh, every region presents uh, information about uh, indigenous types of indigenous knowledge which it uses so that uh, every other region can take it into account and uh, apply it in uh, its area thank you very much okay yes um, thank you very much uh, dilbara 
Uh, I see also Anthony. Yes, I'll give you the floor. I think this will be the last um, remarks, then we'll move on to closing. So Anthony, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Aslak. And um, what I say, or I can say is that uh, it's a request to those who are concerned as far as the uh, a COP is a COP invitation is concerned. Is that uh, to in to uh, to invite uh, a youth representative across the the continent, all continents, so that uh, after uh, the COP, uh, after the COP, youth challenges uh, as far as uh, climate change is concerned. Um, are met because once every if 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 for example in Africa is represented, uh, let's go to Asia, Latin America, Europe, and 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 and, and other continents. Um, youth now can bring uh, one voice together so that uh, every continent to know its challenges uh, to that. Uh, youth um, challenges and concerns are now can now be brought very easily uh, because uh, uh, Eurocop is the final uh, agreement uh, which has been made. So through that uh, voice, uh, youth voices can, can now be heard and then, then uh, their concern now could be able now be, be troubled in a, in a very simple way. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Well, well noted. Um, yes, now we are uh, running out of time, so um, it is time to uh, thank everybody very much um, for your um, valuable inputs, uh, and um, we'll be. We have surely taken note of that, and. Um, the secretariat will be compiling all your inputs into a report that uh, will be shared with you and also it will be made uh, uh, publicly available on the uh, event uh, page. Um, then I want to thank very much from uh, our interpreters from DOSIP, both Ivan and Leila. Thank you for interpreting and also Great thanks to Marie Paul and, and, and uh, Veronica who were offering their interpretation, but then but we did not manage to get any French speakers uh, today. But uh, thank you very much for making making this uh, event possible. So yes, on on the report um, um, that will consist of the comments uh, we got from you today, but also as um, you know, there was uh, another session earlier this week. So also uh, the input from the session one will be compiled in into this uh, report and made available to you. Um, so just um, a few points from the first session. There were some. Um, same themes that um, that were raised also here regarding language barriers and um, a greater need for networking opportunities, as well as the need for um, having access to education and capacity building. So before I let you go, you can see in the chat uh, the Secretariat has uh, has posted um, um, a link to Google Docs. Uh, which is, um, you can uh, find um, uh, this Google form there. So if there was anything you thought uh, was left uh, unmentioned or something you might want to add, then feel free to click on the link and you can provide any, any written remarks or suggestions you might have via this uh, Google form. Also, you can um, write in any any language um, you you prefer um, be that in in russian or or french and will be will be uh, translating that um on the chat you also find a link to the uh, event page of this uh, virtual session 
so the report will be posted on on that link so uh, feel free to uh, to to bookmark that link or or copy it to your notes so you will find the report from there as well yes so um also you can um you can uh, if you want to uh, share any any views the, that were raised uh, today then you can uh, feel free to uh, tweet about it and tag uh, adapt um, exchange um, which is a, a secretariat um, twitter account that uh, um, that is uh, um, relevant for this uh, this event um, so yes again thank you very much this input will be used to um, to design the annual youth table at uh, cop 27 and um, i hope to meet meet some of you there so um again again thank you spasipa uh, to everyone for your participation and um, i wish you a good uh, good weekend and uh, are there any final remarks from the secretariat no, thank you so much, Aslak, and thank you everyone for contributing and participating actively. And as Aslak mentioned, we'll um, create the report and also create the concept note for the annual youth throne table based on your inputs. So um, thank you so much. And please feel free to provide any other inputs and written inputs through the Google form that is put in the chat. We'll also email this to you so you have access to it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and goodbye.